Are you currently church shopping, looking for that right church for you or your family? Perhaps you've been looking and been turned off by organized religion. It happens. Let me suggest you try Unity Church. We are a positive, practical, progressive approach to Christianity. Many who have found us have said, I didn't know there was a church that taught what I always believed. Let's be honest, people shop for clothes, good restaurants, and the right church that feeds them spiritually. If you're seeking a spiritual truth beyond tradition, try Unity Church. Come join us. From Unity Church of Christianity in Houston, Texas, this is The Awakened Life with Reverend Howard Caesar. Unity is a non-denominational Christian church providing a positive, practical, and progressive approach to Christianity. Let's join the service in progress with the Reverend Howard Caesar. So one of the, uh, one of the unique gifts that we've been given uh, as spiritual beings is free will. And uh, so with free will comes uh, a, a dimension of freedom and freedom uh, of choice, really. Uh, there are different directions that we can go with the choices that we've been given uh, in life. Uh, choices, 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 they're always there. We always have options every day, every hour as to uh, what we're going to be, do, think, what have you. And so we know that there is options because we know that we live in a dualistic world. There is duality. There's at least always two choices. There's always a higher way and a lower way. There's always a, a to move toward the light or toward, away from it toward the dark. Or we can always go towards understanding or toward ignorance. We can go towards oneness or we can go towards separation. We can go toward God or we could go away from feeling in the presence of God. And we have all kinds of options being given to us all the time as we live our life. And so it has been said that God has given us uh, the tools, all of the tools for a, a good life, that it is the Father's good pleasure to give us that and to give us that kingdom, okay? Um, but we, we, we all have the, the, the choices that can be made and the decisions that will give us a, a fulfilling, a rich, uh, meaningful, successful life. And, uh, but because we've been given free will, Humanity can miss the mark as part of even our growing experience is at times to miss the mark and then to take aim again And so it can make life difficult and so we misunderstand certain uh, Things or we don't understand spiritual principles or we aren't really aligned with them or aren't living them or are ignoring them We may misdirect our life energies in various ways by the choices that we make our choices may fall short of the glory of God in, in terms of the direction they go. We may be living the life of ego as opposed to living the life of the voice of spirit uh, speaking within us. And so uh, we may you know, be following our own will instead of um, a higher will through prayer and meditation and being more reflective. Um, we, we just can, at, in various ways, make our life harder, harder than it has to be. Um, based on choices and decisions and the way about we go about making them or failing to make them. So, um, you know, a, a, an interesting uh, thing that I came across is that we, we make choices and, and continue doing certain things without really stepping back and saying, you know, does this make sense or is this silly or not? And uh, anyway, I came across uh, an example of that being um, having yards um, and lawns around our homes. I know we love our yards. Um, but it's interesting, where is it that God said we had to have lawns? Um, <laughs> lawns are man's idea, okay? And uh, I came across a conversation between St. Francis and God uh, about this topic. And uh, as you know, uh, St. Francis was a lover of nature, and, uh, and some of you may have visited Assisi, where uh, he had his hermitage, and it was beautiful place where he stayed there and walked around and there were beautiful grounds there and had a wonderful feeling and uh, uh, there were just walkways there was no lawns i didn't see a lawn there uh, at assisi and so anyway there is this talk this conversation that i'm going to share with you and have a little fun with um, and uh, between god and saint francis so it begins like this and this is as if god is you know given us everything and then we do with it what we want okay and that's where our choices come in, really. Uh, we can go towards God or away from God. We can access God or not, and so forth. So uh, it's, it feels a little anthropomorphic more than we, we believe. But anyway, have fun with this, please. So God says to uh, Fran St. Francis, uh, you know all about gardens and nature. Uh, what in the world is going on down there? 
And uh, what happened to the dandelions, the violets, the thistles, and the stuff I started eons ago? I, I had a perfect no-maintenance garden plan. And uh, those plants grow in any type of soil. And they withstand drought. And they multiply with abandon. And the nectar from the long-lasting blossoms attracts butterflies and honeybees and flocks of songbirds. And I expected to see a vast garden of colors by now. But all I see are these green rectangles. And St. Francis says, it's the tribes that settled there, Lord, the suburbanites. <laughs> they started calling your flowers weeds, and they went to great lengths to kill them and replace them with grass. Grass? But it's so boring. <laughs> it's not colorful. Doesn't attract butterflies, birds, and bees, only grubs and sod worms. It's temperamental with temperatures. Do those suburbanites really want all that grass growing there? St. Francis says, apparently so, Lord. They go to great pains to grow it and keep it green. They begin each spring by fertilizing the grass and poisoning, poisoning any other plant that crops up in the lawn. And God says, the spring rains and warm weather probably make grass grow really fast. That must make the suburbanites happy. St. Francis says, well, apparently not, Lord, because um, as soon as it grows a little, they cut it. <laughs> Sometimes twice a week. God says, they cut it. Do they bale it like hay? St. Francis says, not exactly, Lord. Most of them rake it up and put it in bags. They bag it? Why? Is it a cash crop? Do they sell it? <laughs> no, sir, just the opposite. They pay to throw it away. <laughs> now, let me get this straight, God says. They fertilize grass so it will grow, and when it does grow, they cut it off and pay to throw it away. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> These suburbanites must be relieved in the summer when we cut back on the rain and turn up the heat. That surely slows the growth and saves them a lot of work. St. Francis says, you aren't going to believe this, Lord. <laughs> when, the, when the grass stops growing so fast, they, dra they drag out hoses and pay more money to water, to water it so that they can continue to mow it and pay to get rid of it. <laughs> God says, what nonsense. At least they kept some of the trees. You know, the trees grow leaves in the spring to provide beauty and shade in the summer. And then in the autumn, they, they fall those leaves to the ground and they form a natural blanket to keep moisture in the soil and protect the trees and bushes. Plus, as they rot, the leaves form compost to enhance the soil. It's a natural circle of life. St. Francis says, you better sit down, Lord. <laughs> the suburbanites have drawn a new circle. As soon as the leaves fall, they rake them into great piles and pay to have them hauled away. God says, no. What do they do to protect the shrub and tree roots in the winter and to keep the soil moist and loose in the summer? Well, after throwing away the leaves, they go out and buy something that they call mulch. <laughs> they haul it home and spread it around in place of the leaves. And where do they get this mulch? Well, they cut down trees and they grind them up to make the mulch. God says, enough. I don't want to think about this anymore. Turns to St. Catherine, says, you're in charge of the arts. What movie have you scheduled for us tonight? St. Catherine says, dumb and dumber, Lord. <laughs> it's a really stupid movie. God says, never mind. I think I just heard the whole story. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> So, okay, what does that mean? It just means that there are things that we do that really, when you step back, it is kind of silly, isn't it? You know, I mean, we love our lawns. I like, I have lawns, and we have our yards and our gardens and all that, but 
Um, and oh my, I was so meticulous with my lawn in my first house back in my first ministry. When I look back, the hours I spent on that. Um, uh, so uh, it hit, hit the target with me, um, and it may with you. But the point is to look at you know, some other choices that we make and things that we do and spend time on in various ways that may not be really making sense for us and uh, in contributing to our happiness. Another conversation that perhaps we could have with God or God might have with us is uh, about what once were referred to as the little boxes in each room. They're now kind of just sheets of, of uh, things on walls getting bigger all the time, these screens. Uh, we call them TVs. And that the people spend a lot of time watching, uh, watching these things and watching other people living life uh, instead of living it themselves. Uh, they sit in front of these and watch all kinds of negative information fed in from about crises and tragedies and deaths and everything from all over the world, as well as locally. Um, it comes down to choices. Choices. How do we spend our time? What are we feeding ourselves with? To what extent? How much time? Um, all of these kinds of things. So it's a tremendous gift that we all received as thinking beings, and that was the gift of free will. And uh, we have been given the gift of the power of choice. And choice is a powerful thing. Um, you know, the fact that there is choice in life indicates that there are basically always alternatives uh, which are available to us in life. There's always an alternative choice to be made in almost every instance. You know, who you are today is the sum total of the choices that you have made. And who and what you will be or become really is determined by the choices that you will make from this point forward, and any adjustments in those choices. Your life is a composite of choices that have been made over time, all the different altern alternatives that you've had. Um, and some of us can think of bad choices that we've made, uh, but part of life is learning, so we don't want to necessarily get lost on that. Every morning, we are handed a menu, really, of the choices we're going to make for the day that's coming up, and how we're going to make that a good day, and how it's going to taste good in the menu of life. And so what kind of attitudes we're going to choose and order up, what kind of thoughts we're going to think, what kind of per perspectives we're going to take, and all of these things. And hopefully they carry with it a, a choice to be joyful and loving and strengthening and compassionate and empowering and constructive and all of those things that would have the energies moving through us uh, in the highest form and fashion. Um, others sometimes choose leftovers. And the leftovers on the menu basically have to do with anything that got stuck away in the unconscious and moved forward into the next day. It's the leftovers. It can have to do with our past, an upset that you had the previous day or years ago that you were going to carry forward into that day, and you choose to do it. Certain fears that you've carried with you, uh, and you choose to live from another day. Um, various things that maybe have intimidated you in life or limited you in life, uh, perspectives that have limited you. It, 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 it can be any of these. And so the Spirit of God always calls us up higher, uh, to be making higher choices, not to lug the past along. There's a wonderful passage that, uh, that Paul speaks where he says, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward for what lies ahead, I press on for the mark, for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus, the Christ nature, putting on that Christ nature. So. Um, you know, there, there are always alternatives. And even uh, Webster's Dictionary talks about the word alternative as basically offering a choice between two or more things, an opportunity for deciding between two or more courses or propositions. And there's two or more. You can also even listen to Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra, you know, in his witticisms, he was a, a Yankee catcher he, uh, of old. And uh, one of his witticisms was, when you come to a fork in the road, Take it. <laughs> if you could make sense of that, help me. Um, I think he thought if there's a fork lying in the road, pick it up and take it with you. I don't know what he meant. But the point is that there is always uh, a direction to take. God always provides a higher alternative, a course of action, or a choice, or a possibility. Uh, but a person has to sometimes be willing to look for it, as opposed to unconsciously plunge forward into old choices from old menus. You know. And so uh, the scriptures even indicate that God or spirit is always offering up a higher alternative, a higher course. There's the one passage I love where uh, 
God speaks to Abraham and says, lift up your eyes from the place where you are. Look northward, southward, eastward, westward. And for all that you see, all that you choose to see, I will give to you. But you first have to lift up your eyes, you know, to be able to see it and look in every direction of your life, not just one direction. It's into this area, this sector, that sector, into relationships, health, prosperity, uh, all kinds of things, relationships. And so um, if you can see it, you can begin to choose from uh, uh, a new place, a higher place, and move, move forward in it. The law says whatever gets your attention gets you. And that's true, and that can be good or bad in terms of what gets our attention. There's a, a man, that, a young man actually, that um, was born with asthma. And so that was a challenge that he had. And, and when he was a youth, he, he never got to play sports. He always had to sit on the sideline, though he wanted to play. And um, he, uh, when he was 10 years old, his parents divorced. And so he had a lot of frustrations that he dealt with. And from that point of the divorce on, he, his, life kind of, his life kind of spiraled down. Uh, he got into drugs and alcohol abuse and got into smoking uh, two packs of cigarettes a day, even though he had asthma. He didn't finish high school. Uh, he drifted from one part-time job to another. Um, his health was getting steadily worse uh, with all of those um, habits that he had. And, uh, and yet he chose to ignore that his health was going down. And anyway, one day, he just suddenly passed out and fell to the ground and, with an asthma attack and a lung condition that had uh, gotten really bad. And he went into a coma. And he was in the coma for 15 days. And he lost 40 pounds. And when he came out of the coma, he was unable to speak for another two weeks. And uh, that was a good thing because it gave him time to think. And he, he began to ponder, you know, why at age 20, had he almost lost his life, had been brought back from a coma. And uh, with time to reflect, he came to an important conclusion. Uh, he said, I brought this on myself through years of making bad choices. And so he was 20 years old, came to that realization, and he made a resolve. He said, never again, I choose life. Never again that. I now choose the higher road. And he enrolled in a fitness program. Uh, after several years, he became a teacher in aerobics. This is a true story. He went back and got his diploma. And then he worked his way through the university. <clears throat> he met a friend, and they started a company specializing in sportswear. And they started with four employees. And in a year or two, they had almost 100 employees um, in a multi-million dollar enterprise. All began because he stepped back, he looked at what was going on in his life, and he began to make better choices, turned his life around. And so it can be difficult for us to do that sometimes, but because we become so conditioned. And um, you know everything is habitual sometimes, the unconscious we're just doing. Um, I like to use the example, some of you know, uh, if you drove a standard shift car where you had to push in the clutch and, and shift and all that, if you did that for any period of time. I, I did for a summer um, <clears throat> when I was younger. <clears throat> and I know when I went then to an automatic car, even though I didn't have to shift, I kept going like this to find a clutch <laughs> and going down looking for. It took me a while to stop doing that, because uh, even my body was conditioned when I would be slowing down to do those kinds of things. And, and we become conditioned in many areas of our life, and we just automatically going into doing something that we've always done. There's a story about a man who uh, was doing pretty well, and he had, a, had a, a small private plane. And so he and his wife, each weekend, would fly up to their retreat home, which was on a lake. Uh, but where their original residence was, um, you know, they, uh, there was a small little lake near, nearby. And anyway, the, the retreat home, um, they had to fly into a small airfield and then drive another hour to get to the retreat home. He was getting tired of that, so he thought, okay, well, I'll locate my plane over here on this body of water and take off from there, get pontoons, and land right on the lake uh, of my retreat home. And so the first time that he did that, <clears throat> he took off and headed for his uh, retreat home and was coming into the small airfield to land. And his wife, who wasn't paying attention, suddenly awakened and said, honey, what are you doing? We don't have wheels. We can't land here. You've got pontoons now. 
And so it was just in time, and he pulled back and away and, uh, and went and then landed on the lake in front of you know, his, his house by the pier there. And when he landed and turned the engine off, he turned to his wife and said, that is about the stupidest thing I think I've ever done. Then he opened the door to the plane and walked out, <laughs> fell in with the lake. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so when you make your choices and your new choices, remember to be present, uh, you know, because so much is determined by our past, and, and we're held hostage oftentimes by our unconscious and our past. And so it's only in the moment that God speaks anyway, and if you're going to be taken to a higher alternative and a higher choice, uh, you need to be present. You need to be in the moment. You can't be in the past. You can't be worried about the future. You have to be right where you are and be listening and asking. And so in the word uh, alternative is the word alter. And uh, I, love, I love that because, you know, basically uh, it means that uh, to alter your life, to, to make it, to, it changes. The, to grab another alternative is to alter the course and various aspects of your life. And I also like the fact that, though it spelled a little different, it sounds the same, and that is that um, there is an altar, A-L-T-A-R. Um, there is the altar of God that is always there in a higher alternative. You go to the altar of God within by becoming still, and you, you grab for the higher alternative, make a new choice, and you now have altered your life. So you go to the altar within, you grab the higher altar alternative, and you now have altered your life. That's the way it's supposed to go. It's what the Bible refers to as seeing with the single eye. You basically always know that there is the single eye of truth that is there uh, in terms of a way to look at this situation, to look at life, to look at this circumstance. Doesn't mean you're not going to have challenges, but always there is a way to be found there with the single eye. And so when we look outside of ourselves, um, you know, we can sometimes see what seems to be impossible, and, and we, we sell out. And we should never sell out on the basis of looking out. I always like to say, if you look within, you get to win. Uh, and that's the way it is in choices. The story of Exodus uh, in the Bible is a great story here on that because after living in limitation for some 400 years in slavery, Moses got them to lift up their eyes and look beyond the condition that they were in and go for something else and make a new choice. And so as soon as they did, then they came up to where they thought they only had um, you know, the, the obstacle of, of the Red Sea in front of them or their past chasing them in the form of Pharaoh's army and uh, nowhere else to go, and just those two alternatives and those two choices. But Moses showed them that there was still another alternative, and that basically it's found within, at the altar within oneself. And so Moses fired a, this kind of faith-filled, firm uh, alternative that said, fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord. He was saying, Again, just stand firm and be willing to see that the movement of grace can happen here in your life. And you have to be able to, to look for it and take a stand for it. And he said, the Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be still. And so in that moment, um, Moses was then uh, told two things. He was told what to do uh, to make a path when there didn't appear to be a path. And he was also told, now go forward on that path. And uh, so again, so often there, there is a, a way when we can't see one. They couldn't see that there was a way, but Moses said, again, stand firm, become still, lift up your view and your perspective to another alternative that can be there if you connect with the divine. A way will be shown when there doesn't seem to be one, but you have to pause enough to realize that there is another choice here. There is another alternative. And so uh, it's so important to grasp that idea. You know, Jesus is a great leader of always offering alternatives as a teacher as well. Um, you know, he said things like, you know, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But here's another alternative. I say to you, you know, that you should uh, you re resist not evil and turn the other cheek, turn to the other side of, of your spiritual nature. Uh, he said, you've heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. Well, let me give you another alternative here. 
Now, I say to you, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for those that despitefully use or persecute you. Again, another alternative. Um, you can go and live in the world and, and build up and lay up treasures uh, of the earth that moth and rust doth consume. But here's another alternative. How about laying up for yourself treasures in heaven in terms of the inner world of, of the making of who you are, which are, are spiritual character, building spiritual character, that which will, you will take with you always. Don't forget to build those heavenly qualities within yourself, always offering an alternative. He offered, he would say things like, um, judge not. And so what is the lesser alternative to that? It, it's, it's to judge. What does that do? It leads to separation. So judge and you will not be judged. He said forgive. What's the lesser alternative to that? Well, to hold a resentment. That leads to separation, unhappiness. So forgive and you will be for forgiven. He said give. What's the lower alternative? Not to give. To hold, withhold, and cling. Then you're not in the flow of life in many ways. So. Give, and it what shall be given to you. You're always having alternatives and higher alternatives, and that was the way he presented truth. Um, and he even talked about the idea of, you know, I have a food to eat which you know not of. And he said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. And then he went on to say, don't you say, looking out at the white field, at the fields, that they are yet four months, and then comes the harvest? You know what he said to them? He said, I tell you, lift up your eyes right now and see how the fields are already ripe unto harvest. So again, Moses, lift up your eyes. To Abraham, lift up your eyes. Jesus to us, lift up your eyes. And look beyond what you see in front of you. There's other possibilities, but you're blinded by it because you haven't standed firm, you haven't become quiet, you haven't listened within, you haven't accessed something called grace and the movement of the divine in your life. That's part of living life and learning. And so a big difference can be made. Now, I don't know where you all are in your lives. We all have choices every day to make. Some of you came here with a big choice you have to make. Maybe you've been you know, pondering a decision uh, that's really important. Uh, maybe you have uh, many choices, another one this week. Maybe you've had choices of the past that have haunted you. It's time to let go of those, get into the moment, pick up a menu that says today is the day which the Lord has given you, and pick off of that menu that which is the highest alternatives that the divine would give you. To Be still with that menu every morning and make the choices that will serve you and take you forward. It's the way life was meant to be lived. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us for today's message. We invite you to be with us again next Sunday. At Unity, we believe that God's presence of love and goodness is everywhere and that life is meant to be good. You can find out more about Unity and our teachings at unityhouston.org. Are you currently church shopping, looking for that right church for you or your family? Perhaps you've been looking and been turned off by organized religion. It happens. Let me suggest you try Unity Church. We are a positive, practical, progressive approach to Christianity. Many who have found us have said, I didn't know there was a church that taught what I always believed. Let's be honest, people shop for clothes, good restaurants, and the right church that feeds them spiritually. If you're seeking a spiritual truth beyond tradition, try Unity Church. Come join us.